hello everyone welcome to vidyan classes so in this video we are going to discuss quantitative analysis section of karnataka mba pg set 2016 question paper so let us start our video if five men working nine hours a day can reap a field in 16 days in how many days will 18 men reap the field working eight hours a day so this question is of the form that is m1 d1 h1 upon w1 is equals to m2 d2 into h2 upon w2 okay and given that if five men working nine hours a day can reap the field in 16 days number of men that is m1 value here is five number of days here is 16 and number of hours is nine divided by w1 is the work done so in how many days will 18 men reap the field working 8 hours a day? Reap the field in the sense they are doing the same work. That means W1 is equals to W2 here. So therefore in place of W2 I'll replace it by W1 because since both are equal. Then in how many days that means number of days you have to find 18 men. So M2 value is 18 here. Can reap the field working 8 hours a day. So number of hours is 8 you have to find how many days is taken so therefore w1 and w1 will get cancelled 9 ones are 9 twos are 18 8 twos are 16 and 16 will get cancelled here 16 and 16 so number of days d is equals to how much here it is 5 so the answer is option a 5 days if 3 fifth of a system is filled in 1 minute how much more time will be required to fill the rest of it see let's suppose this is a cistern okay whose total capacity is 5 unit total capacity of this cistern okay the total capacity of this cistern is 5 unit now in this 3 fifth of the cistern 3 by 5 of 5 is how much 3 unit right so let us take that this 3 fifth of the cistern which is 3 unit is filled in 1 minute okay so that means this much capacity is now filled in one minute three unit is filled in one minute how much more time will be required to fill the rest so how much is remaining now two unit is remaining so how much time will it take to fill the rest so three unit is filled in one minute one minute means it is 60 seconds so if three unit is filled in 60 seconds then two unit will be filled in how much time so just cross multiply you will get the value so x is equals to that is x is the time taken okay x is equals to 60 into 2 divided by 3 so therefore 320 times is 60 20 into 2 is 40 so 40 seconds is the answer a father can do a job as fast as his two sons working together if one son does the job in three hours and the other in three hours how many hours does it take the father to do the job so given here a father can do a job as fast as his two sons working together which means let's say a father as a and the two sons be s1 and s2 s1 and s2 a father can do as fast as his two sons working together that means here efficiency of father is equals to efficiency of is both the sons working together okay let's suppose that efficiency of his two sons is one unit both the sons efficiency if it is equals to one unit then father's efficiency is also one unit okay so that means a father can do as fast as his two sons working together now if one son does the job in three hours let's say s1 if it if he takes three hours to finish a job and the other in six hours s2 will take six hours to finish the job so how many hours does it take the father to do the job so here what you have to find how many hours does it take the father to do the job so the number of hours taken by the father is equals to number of hours taken by both the sons working together okay because both of them does the work in same time that is the father who is working alone and two sons working together here individual work 
टाइम इज गिवन दैट इज एस वन टेक्स थ्री आवर्स टू फिनिश द जॉब एस टू विल टेक सिक्स आवर्स टू फिनिश द जॉब सो इफ दिस इज द टाइम लेट इज अज्यूम अ वर्क बाय टेकिंग द एलसीएम ऑफ टाइम सो एलसीएम ऑफ टाइम हियर इज सिक्स सो इफ वर्क इज सिक्स यूनिट you will get the efficiency efficiency is nothing but work divided by time so efficiency of s1 will be 6 upon 3 that is 2 efficiency of s2 will be 6 upon 6 that is 1 so how many hours does it take if both of them work together if both of them work together s1 and s2 efficiency will be 2 plus 1 3 units so therefore time taken will be how much time taken will be work divided by efficiency work is 6 efficiency is 3 so 6 by 3 is nothing but 2 units so here time taken by both the sum working together is 2 hours 2 hours so which is equal to the father who can finish the job okay in same hours okay so even father will complete the job in same hours so therefore here the answer will be option b 2 2 hours is the answer a and b working separately can do a piece of work in 9 and 12 days respectively so a can finish a job in 9 days and b can complete the same work in 12 days so this is the time okay from time you can find the work by taking their lcm of the time so that is 9 and 12 lcm here is 36 by this you will get the efficiency efficiency is nothing but work over time 36 by 9 is 4 unit 36 by 12 is 3 unit now you got the efficiency of a you got the efficiency of b also then if they work day, work a day alternatively a beginning in how many days the work will be completed see if they start to work alternatively means first day a will work and a will do how many units of work a can do four units of work in one day that is what efficiency means the next day b b alone will work and b can do three units of work in one day then again next day a will work he will do four units of work then b three units again a four units b three units so like this it will continue so in how many days this 36 unit of work will be completed you have to find okay now if you see here a b a b a b this is repeating right so what you can do you can make a group that is in two days in two days first day a will work second day b will work so in two days how many units of work will be completed in two days 4 plus 3 7 unit of work will be completed correct this is same even after two day after that the next two days also seven unit of work is completed the next two days also seven unit of work is completed because a and b are repeating right so here you can say that in two days seven unit of work is completed so what is the total work to be done total work to be done is 36 so what you do so this is the work done right so you, you go near to 36 so find the value multiple of 7 that is close to 36 so you know very well that 7 5 is a 35 right so if you multiply by 5 here multiply 5 on the left hand side also so therefore what happens 5 into 2 10 days so in 10 days 7 into 5 35 unit of work will be completed in 10 days 35 unit of work is completed so 10 days means who is working on the 10th day b is working on the 10th day because you know first day a is working second day b so if you go on like this Ninth day A will be working. Tenth day B will be working. Now who will come in the next day? Next day A will come, right? So here only thirty-five unit of work is completed. Still one unit of work is to be done, right? Still one unit of work is to be done. But A does how many units of work in one day? A does four units of work in one day. But how much is required to do? Only one unit of work is required to do. So how much time will A take now? so time taken by a to complete one unit of work will be 1 by 4 days correct 1 by 4 days because time taken is means what work upon efficiency work to be completed is only one unit efficiency of a is 4 in so 1 by 4 days now what is the total number of days total number of days will be 10 and 1 by 4 days 10 and 1 by 4 days so this is the answer okay that is option c two pipes can fill a tank in 10 hours and 12 hours respectively 
okay let's the two pipes that is p and q they can fill a tank in 10 hours and 12 hours respectively while the third pipe empties the full tank in 20 hours so third pipe is the negative work okay it is emptying the tank so it is doing negative work here so it can empty the full tank in 20 hours p can fill the full tank in 10 hours q can fill the full tank in 12 hours while pipe r can empty the full tank in 20 hours so this is the time taken again by this you will get the work how by taking the lcm of 10 12 and 20 the lcm of 10 12 20 is 60 so by this you will get efficiency efficiency of pipe a pipe p will be how much 6 unit efficiency of pipe q is 5 unit efficiency of pipe r is 3 unit that means pipe p pipe p fills 6 unit fills it will uh, it will fill six unit of uh, water or six unit of tank in one hour okay in one hour it can fill six unit of tank pipe q can fill five unit of tank in one hour okay while pipe r can empty three unit of tank in one hour got it now while a third pipe empties the full tank in 20 hours if all the three pipes operate simultaneously in how much time the tank will be filled if both if all the three pipes are open then in how much time the tank will be filled is asked so if all the three pipes are open see what happens pipe p it will fill six c let us say this is pipe p this is pipe q and here is the pipe r which is the outlet pipe now pipe p it will fill six unit okay six unit of water it will fill while pipe q it will fill 5 unit of water correct so total it will become how much total it will become 11 unit 11 unit of water is filled in the tank but at the same time pipe r what does it do it will empty 3 unit of tank in 1 hour okay it will empty 3 unit of water now so if 3 unit goes out then remaining will be how much 11 minus 3 that is 8 unit so 8 unit will be filled in 1 hour okay eight unit is filled in one hour got it so in how much time the tank will be filled again time is nothing but work over efficiency work is 60 efficiency is 8 so 60 upon 8 4 to the 18 4 15 times so 2 so 15 by 2 is nothing but 7.5 which is 7 hour 30 minutes 7 hour 30 minutes option d is the answer A mixture contains milk and water in the ratio 5 is to 1. On adding 5 liters of water, the ratio of the milk to water becomes 5 is to 2. The quantity of the milk in the original mixture is. So, mixture contains milk and water in the ratio 5 is to 1. Let milk quantity be 5x, water quantity be 1x or simply x. Then, on adding 5 liters of water, so you are adding 5 liters of water, then the ratio of milk to water will become how much? 5 is to 2 the quantity of milk in the original mixture is that is 5x value you have to find see initially 5x liters of milk was there and x liters of water was there then you added 5 liters of water so then the ratio became how much 5 is to 2 that is 5 unit of milk 2 unit of water correct cross multiply you get 10x is equals to 5x plus 25 10x minus 5x is 5x equals to 25 therefore x is equals to 5 so if x is equals to 5 5x will become how much 5 into 5 that is 25 so the quantity of the milk in the original mixture is 25 liters the ratio between the numbers is 3 is to 4 and the sum of their squares is 625 the numbers are so let the two numbers be 3x 4x they are in the ratio 3 is to 4 so the number be 3x and 4x okay then sum of their squares that is 3x the whole square plus 4x the whole square sum of their squares is equals to 625 3x square is 9x square 4x the whole square is 16x square is equals to 625 9x square plus 16x square is 25x square is equals to 625 so 25 1 times 25 25 times 
x square is equals to 25 so x is equals to root of 25 which is 5 so if x is equals to 5 the numbers are 3x that is 3 5s are 15 4x that is 4 5s are 20 15 and 20 is the answer the ratio of speed of three cars is 2 ratio 3 ratio 4 the ratio of time taken by these cars to travel the same distance so you know speed is equals to distance over time when distance is constant speed and time are inversely proportional speed and time are inversely proportional so speed ratio is 2 is to 3 is to 4 therefore time ratio will become what 1 by 2 ratio 1 by 3 ratio 1 by 4 okay now what is the lcm lcm of 2 3 4 is 12 so what you do multiply 12 to all the fractions multiply 12 to all the fractions so you will get time ratio so 2 1 times 2 6 are 12 so 6 3 1 are 3 4 is a 12 4 4 1 are 4 3 is a 12 6 ratio 4 ratio 3 is the time ratio which is option b study the following table carefully to answer these questions what percentage of total expenditure was spent on transport in the year 2000 rounded off to the nearest integer what percentage of total expenditure was spent on transport c in the year 2000 on transport they have spent how much 215 rupees so 215 rupees is spent on transport out of or spent on see what percentage of total expenditure so total expenditure is here is how much 3535 three, total expenditure is 3535 three, out of the total expenditure in the year 2000 okay so therefore so this is what percentage you have to find 215 divided by 3535 three, into 100 clear now so if you know the ratio percentage to ratio conversion then you can apply some trick here if you know the percentage to ratio conversion that is from 1 1 by 2 to 1 by 20 if you know well then you can use this kind of a trick here that is see look here it is a three digit number here it is a four digit number see which is the first digit here two okay so if it is three digit four digit number now see now two by multiplying which number to 2 you will get something close to 35 okay you have to check like this because since it here it is three digit here it became four digit now you have to see that on which number by multiplying with 2 you will get something close to 35 you have to see less than 35 don't go above 35 less than 35 you see 35 you are not you don't get exactly but which is that number which comes close to 35 on multiplying by 2 17 right 17 to the 34 so therefore you can think that this is in the ratio 1 by 17 215 divided by 3535 is in the ratio 1 by 17 and 1 by 17 value is how much 1 by 17 value is 5.88 percent even if you think that if it is 1 by 16 if you take 6 16 times that is 32 because you should multiply 215 also with the uh, uh, 16 right so therefore suppose if you take 1 by 16 means also 1 by 16 is how much it is 6 point 6 point two five percentage correct 6 point two five percentage so it will be between 1 by 16 to 1 by 17 okay so if you consider the options here 6.25 percent 5.88 percent are very close to which integer it is close to the integer 6 so you can mark 6 as the answer this will save your time in the exam okay this will save your time but you should practice here next expenditure on medical for the years together is approximately what percentage of the total expenditure for all the years expenditure on medical for the years see medical expenditure on the medical for the years is how much 674 is approximately what percentage of total expenditure for all the years total expenditure is how much 17186 see here it is a three digit number here it is a five digit number so that means basically you have to see six and 171 multiplying which number with six you will get 171 like that you have to see otherwise simply 
see this percentage you have to find right so what you do simply just do the division if you don't uh, get to know how to do that you can either do simple division here 674 into 100 will become 67400 divided by 17186 okay so if you do it like this now 17186 if you multiply by which number you will get somewhere close to 67400 so if you multiply by six times it will go more it will become more okay if you multiply six times it will become more if you multiply five times multiplying five see seven you just look here it is 17 this is also five digit number this is also five digit number here it is 17 here it is 67 just see just look at the tables of 17 17 2 is a 34 17 3 is a 51 17 4 is a 68 correct 17 4 is a 68 but it is 67 which is less than four times again less than four times so you can say it is multiple of three you can take multiple of three so if you multiply by three how much you will get six three is a 18 and uh, eight three is a 24 plus one 25 then three ones are three four five seven three is a 21 and uh, three ones are three plus two five so 10 minus eight is two nine minus five is four that uh, 13 minus 5 13 minus 5 is 8 and uh, 6 minus 1 is 5 then 6 minus 5 is 1 and then you will take the decimal point and here it will come 0 so then see 17 it is it is 5 digit it is 6 digit so 17 and 158 so approximately how much times approximately it is going to be 9 times because 17 nines are 153 so you can take it as 9 times so here you will get somewhere 3.9 and 3.9 is close to which number 3.9 is close to 4 so 4 is the answer got it then if there are 100 employees in the year 1997 then what was the average salary per employee per month average salary per employee per month in 1997 so 1997 if you see annual salary is 2100 okay so average annual salary average annual salary okay here they have asked average salary per month of 100 employees here it is annual salary so average annual salary of 100 employees will be how much 2100 that means if each employee's salary is 2100 100 employee salaries okay if you check it like that the average will again be 2100 but this is what annual salary so you have to find average monthly salary that is divided by 12 so on dividing by 12 if you divide this by 12 how much you will get 3 4 is a 12 3 7 is a 21 700 4 1 is a 4 1 is a 4 Four sevens are twenty-eight. Four fives are twenty. So one seventy-five is the answer. Expenditure on maintenance in nineteen ninety-six. Expenditure on maintenance in nineteen ninety-six. So this is maintenance expenditure on maintenance in nineteen ninety-six. Is what percentage of the total expenditure on the maintenance of the given years? Total, it is one zero nine zero. So this value you have to find. So simple division if you want to do 17200 divided by 1090. So 10 zero and 0 you can cancel here. So therefore 1720 divided by 109. So that means this is 109 1 times 109. 12 minus 9 is 3, 6 here, 613. So this is uh, if you take 6 times 9 6 is a 54 and the 654 it will become but it is not six times so this will be five times nine fives of 45 and 545 10 minus 5 is 5 and uh, 12 minus 4 is 8 5 minus 5 is 0 so 15 point uh, 850 here 850 means how much you can take seven times so seven if you take here 8 means it will become more 8 9 is a 72 8 72 it will become so you take 7 times 15.7 so 15.7 means which is the answer option c no need to verify again because 8 times if you take it is going beyond so therefore it is 7 times 
so that means here you can mark option c as the answer 15.78 in which of the following years the percentage rise or fall in the expenditure on telephone from the previous year is maximum say telephone 96 97 98 99 rise or fall okay whichever which person which percentage is more you have to find okay see 96 what happens in 95 it was 115 in 96 it is 132 how much is the increase here increase here is how much increase here is 16 or 17 it is 17 so 17 unit is increased so 17 unit increased out of total 115 initial was 115 this is in the year 1996 okay then in 1997 if you check just a second sell right 1996 1997 1998 1999 okay so in 1996 17 unit increase out of total 115 and in 1997 it is decrease how much decrease so the decrease here is 26 26 unit decrease out of total initially it was how much 132 previous year then in 1998 what happened again decrease decrease of how much 8 unit initially it was 106 and uh, in 1999 it increased increased by how much 24 unit previous it was 98 so which fraction is bigger you have to find so which fraction is bigger that will be that will be having higher percentage right so you have to find which fraction is bigger in this case okay so then how will you do 17 upon 115 26 by 132 8 by 106 24 by 98 so even you can use that trick that i have told you percentage to ratio see here it is 1 here it is 11 or you can see 17 115 how much times it is close to how much 17 6 is 102 17 7 is 119 so if you take it as 1 by 6 okay 1 by 6 it is close to 6 times right 17 6 is 102 17 7 is 119 so let us assume somewhere it is 1 by 6 or between 1 by 6 to 1 by 7 and you know 1 by 6 means how much what is the percentage 1 by 6 means how much percentage it is it is 16.66 percentage right 1 by 7 means again less 14.28 now 26 132 closely how much times so if you see it is five times closely five times so you can say it is one by five one by five means it is 20 percentage eight by one not six eight by one not six this is very small fraction right so it still if you want to find eight by one not six means how much how many times it is so uh, you can still divide by two two fours are eight 2 5 is a 10 and 2 3 is a 6 4 by 53 which means it is close to close to how much 4 tens of 40 44 48 1 by 13 okay 1 by 13 is a, it is very less 1 by 13 is very less 7.69 percentage leave it but see 9 24 by 98 24 2 is a 48 24 2 is a 48 right so which is approximately 1 by 2 times 1 by 2 times means 50 percentage 1 by 2 to 1 by 3 it lies between 1 by 2 to 1 by 3 right so which is between somewhere around 40 percentage it will be so therefore which is which year has highest uh, maximum percentage value that is 1999 has the maximum percentage value that is option d is our answer next a vendor buys milk at a certain price, adds water and sells the adulterated milk at the same rate as he bought it for. He makes the 30% profit. So what is the percentage of water he adds to the milk? So let us understand the question in a simple way. Okay. See actually this, uh, this question has no weightage. Okay. The answer here will be C. The profit percent what is earned is the same value that is same percentage of water that is added okay so if 30 percent profit is earned that means the percentage of water here added is 30 percent only so this is a direct one but here you should know the concept how you can how can you mark the answer directly for that you should know the concept to understand the concept you should learn with some examples okay see here just understand this question first 
a vendor buys milk at a certain price adds water and sells the adulterated milk at the same rate as he bought it for and still he makes the profit of 30 percent so what is the percentage of water he adds to the milk now let us say that let the cost price of one liter of milk is one unit or one rupee okay cost price of one liter of milk is one rupee now let us assume that a vendor bought 130 liters of milk so 130 liters of milk will cost him how much that will cost him 130 rupees correct so this is the cost price now if he has to sell it at the same price that he has bought that means he has to sell it at 130 rupees now they told that he is selling it at the same rate his selling price is same that is 130 rupees only cost price is also 130 rupees selling price is also 130 rupees but he is making 30 percent profit how can he make 30 percent profit without increasing the cost price that is not possible right for that sake what he is doing he is mixing some water okay that means he adds water and sells the adulterated milk at the same rate so therefore he is making 30 percent profit now what is the percentage of water he added now how to find see 130 rupees is the selling price and he is gaining 30 percent profit therefore what is the actual cost price then actual cost price is how much so 130 rupees see 130 rupees 30 percent profit means what on 100 unit value okay 100 unit value if it is sold at 130 unit 30 unit is the profit so this 30 is how much how much percentage of 100 30 is 30 percent of 100 30 percent profit means if 100 is the cost price 30 is the profit so selling price will be 130 selling price will be 130 so that is why i have taken this examples to make you clear okay so i have taken this number just to make you clear so 130 rupees is the selling price and he is making 30 percent profit means on 100 unit or 100 unit of cost price okay he is gaining 30 rupees therefore his profit is becoming 30 percent that means basically he has sold only 100 liters of milk actually he sold only 100 liters of milk at 130 rupees okay he sold only 100 liters of milk at 130 rupees therefore he is getting 30 percent profit okay but he is telling that quantity is also same that is 130 liter of milk he has bought so he is selling 130 liter of milk only so to make the quantity equal therefore he is adding 30 liters of water okay so whatever the profit is earned water the, uh, the cost price of water is zero okay water is free cost price of water is zero therefore whatever the profit is earning is equivalent to the water he is added so that is 30 units of water is added out of 100 for 100 so this is added percentage is how much 30 percentage so option a 30 percent is the answer if the selling price of an article is four by three times of its cost price that is cost price and selling price if the cost price is one unit selling price is 4 by 3 times of it the profit percentage is so cp and sp ratio will become how much now 1 is to 4 by 3 so multiply both the side by 3 then you will get cp is 3 unit sp will be 4 unit now what is the profit cost price is 3 unit selling price is 1 unit means 1 unit profit is earned profit percentage will become how much 1 by 3 1 by 3 means 33.33 percentage or 33 1 by 3 percentage which is option a if by selling 110 mangoes the cost price of 120 mangoes is realized the gain percentage if by selling 110 mangoes cost price of 120 mangoes is realized let cost price of one mango b 1 rupee therefore cost price of 120 mangoes will be equals to how much 120 rupees so if by selling 110 mangoes therefore cost price of 
110 mangoes is how much now? Cost price of 110 mangoes is 110 rupees. So he is selling 110 mangoes and 110 mangoes cost price is 110 rupees. But how much money he is getting? By selling 110 mangoes, cost price of 120 mangoes is realized. That means CP is 110, but selling price is how much? Cost cost price of 120 mangoes. Cost price of 120 mangoes is how much? 120 rupees. So CP is 110, SP is 120. What is the gain percentage? So profit here is 10 unit. So 10 is what percentage of 110? So 10 by 110 is 1 by 11. 1 by 11 means you know in terms of percentage it is 9.09 percentage or you can say 9 1 by 11 percentage. Option D. A can do a certain work in 12 days. A can do certain work in 12 days. B is 60% more efficient than A. So efficiency ratio you can derive from this. B is 60% more efficient than A means what? If A's efficiency is 10 unit, 60% of 10 is 6. So 60% more efficient means 10 plus 6, 16. Which is if you divide this further, you will get the ratio 5 is to 8. So the efficiency ratio of A and B is how much? 5 is to 8. Okay. So the number of days it takes B to do the same piece of work. See so time taken by A. Time taken by A is how much? 12 days. Efficiency of A is 5. Work done is nothing but work done is nothing but efficiency into time taken. That is 5 into 12. So work done is 60 unit. So A has done 60 unit of work. To complete the same piece of work, how much time will B take? So time taken by B will be work done divided by efficiency of B. Work to be done is 60. Efficiency of B is 8 unit. So 60 by 8, it is 7.5, which is option C, 7 and a half days. If A lends rupees 3500 to B at 10% per annum, C. A is giving money to B. How much? 3500. At what rate of interest? 10%. Okay. And B lends the same sum to C. He is lending the same sum to C at how much percentage interest? 11.5%. Then the gain of B in a period of 3 years. This is simple interest, right? gain of b in a period of three years see in three years this 10 percent will become how much 30 percent while in three years 11.5 percentage will become how much so in three years 11.5 percentage will be see five three is a 15 then three ones are three four 34.5 34.5 so what is the gain that b earns C. For B, it was 30%. He has given to C and he, he is getting 34.5%. Right? So, what is the gain here? The gain of B here is 4.5%. Gain of B is 4.5%. Got it? Or you can either see directly. That is, difference between 10 and 11.5 is 1.5. 1.5% gain in one year. For three years, gain will be 4.5%. In this way also, you can see. Okay, if it is becoming difficult or time consuming to multiply, then what you can do? Difference between 10.10% and 11.5% is 1.5%. So 1.5% gain in one year, for three years it will be 4.5%. So 4.5% of what? 4.5% of 3500. Okay, so that is 4.5 into 35 or you can say 45 by 10 into 35 so 45 into 35 45 into 35 5 5 is a 25 5 4 is a 20 5 3 is a 15 35 plus 2 37 4 3 is a 12 plus 3 15 1 5 7 5 divided by 10 which is nothing but 157.5 option c The difference between the compound interest and the simple interest on a sum of money for two years at 12.5% per annum is rupees 150. The sum is CI for two years minus SI for two years. See, compound interest will be more, right? Always. 
सी आई माइनस टू सी कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट फॉर टू इयर्स माइनस सिंपल इंटरेस्ट फॉर टू इयर्स इफ यू डू यू विल गेट वन फिफ्टी रुपीज दैट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट एंड सिंपल इंटरेस्ट ऑन अ सम ऑफ मनी फॉर टू इयर्स रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज आ मच ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव परसेंटेज वट इज द फ्रैक्शन वैल्यू ऑफ दिस ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव परसेंटेज वन बाई एट सो दैट मीन्स इन कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट यू कैन से हियर एट इज द प्रिंसिपल वन यूनिट इज द इंटरेस्ट एडेड दैट मीन्स on 8 unit principal if 1 unit interest is added amount will become 9 unit this is for first year second year also same thing on 8 unit principal if 1 unit uh, interest is added amount will become 9 so in 2 years this will be 8 is a 64 9 is a 81 so 64 unit value okay if the principal is 64 unit amount will become 81 unit in 2 years okay in 2 years what is the compound interest earned here compound interest earned here is 17 unit compound interest earned is 17 unit in 2 years now let us take the same principle that is 64 unit only okay and here for 2 years at simple interest for 2 years at simple interest what will be the simple interest rate of interest is 12.5 for 1 year for 2 years 12.5 into 2 24 25 percentage simple interest for 2 years will become how much 12.5 into 2 25 percent 25 percentage means how much 1 by 4 so 1 by 4 of 64 is how much that is 16 so 16 unit is the si okay this is the simple interest for 2 years 17 unit is the ci for 2 years now what is the difference 17 minus 16 is 1 unit so this one unit value is 150 find the principal what is the principal we have assumed here principal we have taken as 64 so 64 unit value you have to find that means 64 into 150 okay 150 you can think it as 100 plus 50 so 64 into 100 will become 6400 64 into 50 that is half of 6400 which is 3200 so the total final answer will be 9600 option d so all this thing you will understand in our classes because here we have used some tricks that if you are a beginner you cannot understand this but if you come go through our classes then you will get to know all these methods clear a man borrowed rupees 800 at 10% per annum simple interest and immediately lent the whole sum at 10% per annum compound interest what does he gain at the end of 2 years the simple thing simple interest is 10% for 2 years simple interest will become how much simple interest for 2 years will become 10% into 2 which is 20% 10% at compound interest ci for 2 years will become how much compound interest means it is successive thing okay first year it is 10% again on the total amount again 10% is calculated so which means it is a successive so there is a formula for successive case that is x plus y plus x into y divided by 100 okay so here first year also 10% second year is also 10% therefore x and y value will be same so 10 plus 10 Plus 10 into 10 by 100. If you do, you will get the effective rate of interest for two years. Okay, that is 10 plus 10 is 20 plus 10 into 10 by 100. 10 tens are 100, so both will get cancelled. 20 plus 1, which is 21 percent. See, understand the difference. If you give it simple interest, 10 percent value will become 20 percent. But if you are giving in compound interest 10% value will become 21% in 2 years what is the profit the gain here is 1% gain here is 1% 1% of what 1% of principal principal is how much 800 1% of 800 means 8 rupees so the gain he earned at the end of 2 years is 8 rupees if a man running at a speed of 15 km per hour crosses a bridge in 5 minutes then the length of the bridge is so if a man okay he is running at the speed of 15 km per hour he is crossing a bridge so bridge has certain length in 5 minutes then the length of the bridge is so you know that speed is equals to distance upon time speed is what speed is the 
running speed of man that is 15 km per hour okay 15 km per hour then is equals to distance covered is length of the bridge distance covered will be length of the bridge that is what you are required to find so i'll denote it as l of b time taken is five minutes so speed is in kilometer per hour so in order to write this minutes in hours what i will do five by 60 okay five by 60 so that means you have converted minutes into hours five by 60 means one by 12 one by 12 okay so length of the bridge will be so 1 by 12 means how much so 1 by 12 means this will become what 15 is equals to 12 into length of bridge so that is 15 divided by 12 okay 15 divided by 12 so that is in kilometers that is in kilometers if you want to convert it into meters if you want to convert this into the meters See, it's 15 by 12 means 3 fours are 12, 3 fives are 15. 5 by 4 kilometers. 5 by 4 kilometers, if you want to convert it into meters, multiply by 1000. Multiply this by 1000. So, therefore, what you will get? 5000 by 4. 5000 by 4 means how much? 1, 2. So, 4 ones are 4. 4 twos are 8. 1, 2, 5, 0. 1 to 5 0 meters is the answer option d okay river is running at 2 km per hour it takes a man twice as long to row up as to row down the river the rate of the man in still water is see this is a river flowing in this direction the speed of the river okay that is sw i'll take speed of the river is 2 km per hour you have to find the speed of the man okay so they've told that it takes man twice as long to row up as to row down the river so time is given time ratio that is upstream time taken to row up means upstream time and downstream time is given upstream means what upstream means you are you and the water are in opposite directions they are coming in opposite directions you are going the man is going in the opposite direction of water see if this is the direction of water so the man is coming in this direction that is upstream speed and upstream time downstream means you are going along with the stream so it takes twice as long to row up as to row down that means the ratio of upstream time taken and downstream time taken is 2 is to 1 got it so the distance but distance is constant right the distance is constant so when the distance is constant you know the formula speed is equal to distance upon time so when the distance is constant speed and time are inversely proportional so if time ratio is 2 is to 1 therefore speed ratio upstream speed and downstream speed speed ratio will become how much inverse of this that is 1 ratio 2 okay 1 is to 2 right so upstream speed and downstream speed are in the ratio 1 is to 2 so you know that speed of the water is 2 km per hour what is upstream speed upstream speed means speed of boat or speed of man minus speed of water and downstream speed is what speed of boat plus speed of water correct so therefore you have the ratio of upstream speed and downstream speed upstream speed will become how much you don't know what is the speed of a man so let us take it as x upstream speed means speed of the man minus speed of water speed of water is given that is 2 downstream means speed of the man plus speed of the water so that is equals to upstream by downstream ratio will be how much 1 is to 2 so cross multiply what you will get here 2x minus 4 is equals to x plus 2 so 2x minus x will become x 2 plus 4 will become 6 so the rate of man in the still water is 6 km per hour The average weight of group of boys and girls is 38 kgs. Average weight of boys is 42 kgs and that of girls is 33 kgs. Number of boys is 25, then the number of girls is. So this is based upon mixture and allegations. You will get the answer very easily here. Average weight of boys is given 42 kg. Average weight of girls is given 33 kgs. And the average weight of the group of boys and girls together is given 38. So that 
mean average that is average of boys and girls you will write it in the center so here 42 kg is the average weight of boys 33 kg is the average weight of girls okay now what you will do diagonally you will take you will find the difference 42 minus 38 that is 4 unit and uh, 38 minus 33 the difference 38 and 33 difference is 5 unit so here you will get a ratio and this ratio is nothing but number of boys and girls so this is the ratio of number of boys and girls so the ratio you are getting here is the ratio of number of boys and girls okay so boys are 5 unit girls are 4 unit number of boys is already given 25 so 5 unit value is 25 means 1 unit value is 5 so therefore 4 unit value will become 4 into 5 that is 20 number of girls are 20 there are four numbers average of the first three is 15 and the last three is 16 if the last number is 19 find the first number easy one let the four numbers a b c d average of first three numbers is 15 therefore sum of first three numbers sum of first three numbers will become how much average into three because there are three numbers right so 15 3 is a 45 and that of last three numbers average of last three numbers is 16 therefore sum of last three numbers will be how much sum of last three numbers will be 16 into 3 that is 48 got it 16 into 3 that is 48 if the last number is 19 find the first number if the last number is 19 find the first number so what you will get sum of first three numbers means what a plus b plus c according to this correct sum of last three numbers means what b plus c plus d so from this value if you subtract this one that is b plus c plus d minus of a plus b plus c that is minus a minus b minus c what you will get c b b a not a b and b will get cancelled c and c will get cancelled so you will be remaining with d minus a what is d d is the last number a is the first number so sum of last three numbers minus sum of first three numbers if you do you will get last number minus first number is equals to 48 minus 5 that is 3 so they have given already that last number is 19 that is d value is 19 so 19 minus a is equals to 3 19 minus 3 is equals to a so a value will become how much 16 option a is the answer if x 2x plus 2 3x plus 3 are in gp then the fourth term is see what is gp gp means a constant number is multiplied to the preceding numbers okay a number is multiplied by a constant value okay so that means like 2 4 8 16 these numbers are in jp how if you see 2 2 is becoming 4 that means it is multiplied by 2 times 2 2 is a 4 okay then if you multiply 4 by 2 you will get 8 8 into 2 you will get 16 so a constant number is multiplied to the preceding number and you will get the next number okay so remember constant number is multiplied this is gp ap is what constant number is added to the preceding number that is 2 4 6 8 like this here it is plus 2 here it is plus 2 here it is plus 2 so ap means a constant value is added gp means constant value is multiplied okay that is the difference between ap and gp now so if x 2x plus 2 3x plus 3 are in gp then the fourth term is see so first look at some example that is let us take one series of a gp that is 2 4 8 16 32 you know these numbers are in gp right because you understood that it is having constant multiple correct now let us take three terms only let us take only three terms that is 2 4 8 so if you see this thing okay let me call this as a b c so here if i say b square is equals to ac just check whether this is true or what whether this holds true or not 
just check this out a b c are the first three terms okay so b square is equals to a c i have written just check whether this is correct so b here is 4 4 square will become 16 a is 2 2 into 8 that is also 16 so 16 into 16 this is satisfied so you can take any three cons any three consecutive terms in the series okay you can take any three consecutive terms you will get the same thing let us take 4 8 16 okay now this is a b c now so what i have told b square is equals to a c that is 8 square is 64 and a into c that is 4 into 16 is also 64 so 64 is equals to 64 correct got it so b square is equals to a c this thing you should know okay so by this you can find the value of x here so here x 2x plus 2 3x plus 3 are in gp that means there are three consecutive numbers in the series so you know that if this is a b and c you know very well that b square is equals to ac so b square means what 2x plus 2 the whole square is equals to a is x c is 3x plus 3 now in 2x plus 2 the whole square 2 is common correct so if i take 2 common out you should square that number also 2 square will become how much 4 so if you take 2 as common it will become x plus 1 in the bracket x plus 1 the whole square okay is equals to x here 3 is common so therefore x into i am taking 3 out so this will become x plus 1 right so this is 4 into x plus 1 the whole square is equals to 3x into x plus 1 so x plus 1 and here 1 x plus 1 will get cancelled so what is left 4 into x plus 1 that is 4x plus 4 is equals to 3x 4x minus 3x is equals to minus 4 therefore x value is minus 4 so if x value is minus 4 the numbers will become what x is minus 4 2x plus 2 that is 2 times of minus 4 plus 2 that is minus 8 plus 2 minus 8 plus 2 is minus 6 right then 3x plus 3 3 times of minus 4 plus 3 4 3 is a 12 minus 12 plus 3 is minus 9 so the numbers are what minus 4 minus 6 minus 9 and you have to find the fourth one okay so how to find the fourth term how to find the fourth term so here in order to find any term in the gp okay you have to find fourth term in the gp so the formula to find here is a r to the power n minus 1 a into r to the power n minus 1 what is a a is nothing but the first term and r is what r is nothing but b by a okay it is a this is b this is c correct so b by a which is constant everywhere okay this is constant everywhere see we have taken simple example that is 2 4 8 16 b by a means what r is nothing but b by a that is 4 by 2 which is 2 that means the constant value by which it is multiplying that is what it is r okay so that is that you can find by how b upon a so here b is how much minus 6 a is minus 4 correct minus minus will get cancelled 2 3 is a 2 2 is a so r value is how much 3 by 2 now fourth term will be a into r power n minus 1 a value is minus 4 r power r value is how much 3 by 2 to the power n minus 1 that is 4 minus 1 which is 3 so therefore minus 4 3 cube is 27 2 cube is 8 4 1s are 4 2s are minus 27 by 2 minus 27 by 2 means how much minus 13.5 minus 13.5 is the answer okay so thank you so much for watching this video see you all in the next session till then stay focused and keep learning Take care. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.